Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and this is Whitney's Tiny Life and today I wanted to share our first unit study that we did in our homeschool preschool. So I have a three-year-old and a four-year-old and we do a pretty laid-back casual homeschooling right now and um, I had tried out the idea of doing themed months where during the course of a month we would try to find lots of different books and some activities and even some uh, videos, movies to fit a certain theme. And we had done this with a um, farming theme. We did a month where we read a lot of books about farming and gardening. Um, we also did a month where we read a lot of books about outer space and um, you know, it was fun, but we quickly realized that a month was too long of a time to stick with one theme. So um, we switched gears and now we're doing theme weeks, which is really exciting because I'm able to incorporate a lot more than just books. I'm able to come up with a lot of different activities that completely revolve around the theme. And so it's something that we're still kind of testing out, but um, it went well for the first week and our first theme week was bugs. And um, I just went through our homeschool area and found lots of different games and activities and books and things that fell into the theme. By the way, I have to apologize. There is a fly that is buzzing around this area, which is fitting since it's bug week. Um, but if it flies in front of the camera, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, so I just pulled out a bunch of things that were bug themed. I also made a few things um, to fit into the theme. And I was really surprised at how much I already had. Um, and we had so much fun. So I wanted to show everything that we did this week that was bug related and um, kind of give you not really a review but tell you you know what we liked what we didn't really like and all of that and maybe it'll give you some ideas for some lessons that you can create and um, if you like this kind of video let me know and I can keep doing this for each theme week that we do. So I wanted to start off with the books that we have for this week. Obviously you cannot have anything bug themed without doing the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar um, or Very Hungry Caterpillar and my kids love this book. It is well worn already so they know the story very very well um, but it's still something that they enjoy and um, you know, it's really, now that as they're getting older, they're starting to really catch the life cycle portion of it and not just how fun it is to see the holes in the different fruits. Um, so this one is really great for a lot of different ages because you can talk about, um, you know, just from a very early level, just the, you know, oh, look, they won apple and you can count along. And then as your kids get older, you can go through the life cycle of um, eggs, caterpillar, you know, chrysalis, butterfly, and then it starts over. So this one is a really great book. And then this is the only thing I actually purchased for this theme week. And it's marked 55 cents. I actually got it at the thrift store on half price day. So it was half of 55 cents. And we didn't end up using it um, because I felt like the pictures may have been just a little too creepy crawly for my kids. Um, I know they're pretty, you know, they're realistic photos, but for their age group, um, I kind of tended to stick toward the kind of cuter side of bugs, um, just so, you know, they weren't creeped out. So I'm going to save this back and then maybe next year we'll hit this theme again and we'll be ready to use this book and learn some more from it. We also read The Magic School Bus Meets The Rot Squad. Now this one isn't necessarily a bug book, but it does go into how different bugs and insects um, do help with the decomposition. So, um, not totally, totally bug themed, but it was still a really good one to incorporate into this week since I didn't have a ton of books that were related to the topic. And then the other one I had was Curious George, A Home for Honey Bees, and this goes into how um, bees live in the hives and make honeycomb and different things like that. And then I also wanted to include this. This is from a dictionary that I have from, I believe, 1940 is the edition that I have. It was originally published in 1935. And um, this, the dictionary is absolutely falling apart, but I was able to carefully take out all of the uh, pages with the colored graphics 
and there is the insects and the butterflies and moths and then there's just lots of other beautiful beautiful charts that I definitely wanted to save even though the book itself is beyond repair so I just took out the ones that you know all the images and then I showed the kids the ones related to this week's theme and then as we hit other topics oh there's a fish one too as we hit other topics such as like fruits and vegetables we will definitely use this page I love this one it's so beautiful so I just wanted to show that even though I don't have the completed book it is from a book and we did use it as a resource this week Another book that I really enjoyed reading was this Wonder World of Science book two, originally printed in 1940. I have the 1950 copy of it, and I have a habit of buying old school books, um, mostly elementary aged readers, but this is a science book that I had bought, and um, we really liked, or at least I really liked, reading this one. It has a lot of different um, sort of science content into it in it. So I really enjoyed reading some parts of this book that pertained to bugs. And this one is really interesting. Um, I'm not sure what grade level it is intended for, um, but it is laid out as a storybook kind of, but it's full of facts. So it follows Jimmy and Alice around. And so it starts off there looking at some animals near the water and they are kind of reminiscing about animals that eat plants and so of course it goes into insects and then it talks about animals that eat um, other animals and so um, you know some of them are eating insects and so we read um, until here in the book and then we skipped forward animals getting ready for winter and so there's a section about insects and how they um, survive through the winter and then there is another section about insects in the garden and how some of them are helpful and other animals aren't so helpful in the garden so this was a really interesting book we're definitely going to use it again for the frog life cycle and some different things but I really like the illustrations in it that's one reason why I collect the old readers is because of the beautiful illustrations that they have in them and so um, yeah we really enjoyed using this book for our bug unit in addition to the books I have a couple of other things that are um, well kind of book ish so this one is a English Spanish picture dictionary and I had marked the book page and we didn't actually um, get around to doing this one but um, I just wanted to show this because I love this Spanish English dictionary I am absolutely hopeless at foreign languages so I am um, I cannot speak any language other than English in any way, shape, or form, but that doesn't mean my kids are hopeless, so we're trying. And um, we've been incorporating the colors in Spanish into some of our lessons, so um, we may go ahead and go over this one next week, even though we'll be past bug week. And... Um, I may have to Google them for the actual pronunciations. Um, but this is a really great resource that I picked up a few weeks ago at the thrift store. Um, it was also the half of 55 cents, and you cannot beat that price. It is a beautiful book to have in our stash. And then we have a sticker book that we are still in progress. We're going to try to finish it up tomorrow. Um, but this one is all about bugs and insects. We picked this up at Dollar Tree and we are, I believe, halfway through it. Let's see. And the great thing about this one is there's extra stickers. So we've already completed these pages, but there's extra stickers that we can incorporate into some other um, projects. Or if I want to make my own workbook pages, I can do that and have them, you know, match up these two, you know, match up the butterflies that match and that sort of thing. Um, 
So I like that they included the extra ones on here and it's great for things like this where we're doing themed weeks. And I also had another sticker book that had just one page in it that was insect theme, but um, I'm not sure where that one ended up so I can't show it right now. Something else I got from Dollar Tree is this fold out poster that is the life of a butterfly and it goes through the whole life cycle, but I don't like that it says cocoon. Um, because for a butterfly it's supposed to be chrysalis, but um, it's close enough. And actually before I purchased that, I had made my own version um, that I really like. I used rice for the eggs and I hot glued it on and then I put some tacky glue over it to try to seal it in and keep out bugs. Then I used pom-poms and I did them in the same colors as the Very Hungry Caterpillar. I used a paper bag, part of a paper bag to make a chrysalis. And then this is one flower off of a lay that we have that we picked up at Dollar Tree and part of a pipe cleaner to make the butterfly. And I really like how this turned out. I'm definitely going to be keeping this and I might find a, a way to hang it up so the kids can um, continue to see it even after this week is over. One thing I did this week that was fun was grab a few bugs. I was out picking mulberries, which I have to do regularly because it's mulberry season, and I saw a few bugs, so I um, put them in this little um, bug reviewing case. I don't know what it's called, but... Um, <laughs> And I came across a few bugs while I was out there picking the mulberries and so I put them in this little container and I didn't actually use the net or the tweezers. The net is terrible quality, let me tell you. So um, it started coming apart as soon as I opened the package, but the little container is kind of cool. This is a magnifying glass so you can see the items inside at a closer look. Um, so this was really fun. The kids enjoyed this and we put a few mulberries in there with the bugs so they would have something to eat and we kept them for about a day and um, looked at them several times and then we put them back out outside so that they could continue living their lives. That came from Dollar Tree as a set. And another thing I picked up from Dollar Tree um, actually several months ago was this little pencil box. And um, it just happened to have bugs on it. It wasn't planned for this. And so I stuck letter buttons in here and they spell out some different words. There is two of each to spell out bug bee and ant. So we use this for a little um, spelling lesson as well as just a letter identification. So both kids got their letters and they spelled out the word that was on the card and they really had fun doing that and just finding the matching letters and seeing that, um, you know, these words aren't hard to spell, so they're not hard to read and all of that. And so it was very hands-on and they enjoyed it. I just pulled these out of a flashcard set that I had bought at Dollar Tree a couple of years ago. Um, actually, maybe even longer than that. So I just went through the whole set and found anything that was bug related and grabbed it out. And I like doing that with... Um, the flashcards that we have, I just kind of sort through them and figure out what is appropriate for our lesson or for the age they're at or anything like that. And I go ahead and pull those out separate and use them for what we want to use them for. And then I stick them back in with the rest of the cards later. I also have this set of cards here and it is a matching the puzzle set. By the way, if you're wondering about my hands, they are stained from picking mulberries. Um, so here is a set where you match them up and it has uh, 0 through 10, I believe, or 12, I'm not sure. And so it says, you know, 0 Bs. And then there's, you know, one ribbon is what the next one is. And since it was relating to Bs, I put it in with our stuff for this lesson. Um, but we didn't actually get around to using it, but I did want to mention it that there are some you know bug related cards in it and it's just a really a really fun set of cards
Then I wanted to mention the things that I made for our lesson. So the first one was a little craft where we decorated ladybugs. So I just drew out the head shape and then the legs and glued a paper plate folded in half and I let the kids decorate it, decorate the legs and everything and then um, I actually cut it out. The kids could have cut it out but I did it this time and then we glued it all together so that they had a little ladybug that they made themselves. So really cute craft project and then I made several other things as well for our lesson. So the first one is this little caterpillar with different sections and what we did for this one was um, I have a clock that has it's like a puzzle and so each number is a puzzle piece that can be removed and it's a different shape it's a Melissa and Doug clock and so I put all of the number pieces in a bag and I let them draw one out of the bag and whatever number they got they had to put that many pom-poms on their caterpillars so they were building a caterpillar so if they reached in the bag and they drew number five they had to pick five pom-poms out and lay them out until their caterpillar was five circles long or five pom-poms long and they really enjoyed that game and this is something that we can keep and use again if we want to um, but they really enjoyed it and it was just a way to familiarize with them with the numbers they already know their numbers but it's a great way to associate the actual counting of objects with the number that they visually recognize and um, for Peyton I made her use tweezers to pick up the pom-poms so that was great for fine motor skill and um, also it's familiarizing them with the clock because as they drew each number they then had to place it in the clock puzzle in the right spot so there was a lot of really good learning with that game and they both enjoyed it and um, then I do just have a couple of coloring sheets that we didn't get to I just pulled these out of just dollar store coloring books that we already had in our stash and I had pulled out four of them and we only got to two this is a little sheet that I made. I just drew some very basic bugs on here. I'm not an artist by any means. Um, but we use this for Play-Doh. So it's in a sheet protector and then the kids just rolled out logs and balls and put them on the bugs to create different little bugs out of Play-Doh. Um, we don't use a lot of Play-Doh in this house because I used to be really scared of it because we had carpet and I have a child who put everything in her mouth until she was about three years old. So um, we're just now getting to where we really use Play-Doh much. So I am um, creating little things to give them some ideas on what they can make with Play-Doh since it's still new to them. Um, on the other side, we just have a little tracing that they could do. Um, this was pulled out of a workbook and it was the only one I could find that was bug theme. Then I created some little shape templates for our little um, shape, uh, oh, what are they called? I don't even know. The little flat colored shape things. <laughs> I got ours at Target in the dollar section. But this one is supposed to be a beehive. And then we have a bumblebee of sorts. Like here's the stinger, here's the wings, here's the head. And then we have a flower that the bumblebee can go and drink the nectar or spread the pollen or whatever from. Um, so a little bit of a stretch, but um, my kids love playing with those little shape things. So I was just trying to come up with anything I could think of that um, would kind of fit into the theme. The last thing I made were these little... Um, math cards I guess you would call them so the, they had to count how many bug stickers are on there and then clip the correct answer they are self-correcting there's a dot on the spot that is correct and then I also had them pick out the correct side of the dice and the correct domino to match and the purpose of this my kids can easily count one through six which is what I went to but they are not quick at knowing 
what that represents when they just quickly look at a dice or a domino. Um, so this game is to help them get more familiar with, okay, if it's, th you know, in a diagonal like that, it's three. If it's, you know, the X, it's five. You know, the box is four. I want them to be able to quickly know what number that represents if they see it on a dice or on a domino or something like that because um, it just helps with, you know, some memorization things as well as, you know, if you're playing a game, a lot of games incorporate dice and you don't want them to have to go one, two, three, four, five, six every single time. So I'm just trying to help them, um, you know, be more familiar with the layout of how the dots are on different game pieces. And they really enjoyed this one, both kids did. Um, even though, like I said, it is, as far as counting goes, it is pretty beneath their level. Um, Peyton can, you know, recite her numbers and count up to like maybe 24 or 25. So one through six is really easy for her. But like I said, she still does have to count every dot on the dice. So, you know, it's just something fun that I put together and it was really easy. I just used some note cards and then some stickers from the Target dollar spot. I still have this mini left. Um, so yeah, stickers are a really fantastic way to a match things to a theme and b create your own little activities here's some from the dollar store that are also bugs so um you know this is a really easy way to create your own little activities and i do want to throw this in um another little activity that i've made with stickers i've done like the matching where you draw you know you have a column of items here and a column of items there and you just have them match the same things and i've also done left and right so they have to take the princess stickers or whatever it is and all the ones facing left they have to put in the left column and all the ones facing right they have to put in the right column um I have done just all sorts of different activities with stickers and they are a great cheap way to create custom activities for whatever skills and things your child needs to learn. The last things that we did were some games. I had set out two games for us to use this week. The first is the cootie bug game and we didn't actually play the game. Um, the game itself is kind of, I don't know. I don't enjoy it. So um, we've only played the game once, but instead of that, I just let my kids play with the parts and they love just mixing and matching and creating different unique bugs. And so they think that's what the game is. They don't realize there's like another different component to it, but um, they really like doing that. They like putting them together. They try to create the ones that are on the box and then they try to create just their own unique looking ones and so they really enjoyed that and then I also set out the snakes and ladders magnetic game from Dollar Tree because it has little bugs as the characters and we didn't get around to playing this one we've played it in the past and um, we enjoy it but this week we just didn't get around to it so um, but I did still want to show it since it was something that I set aside for this unit. So I hope you found something in this video interesting and maybe an activity or um, different thing that you'll try out in your homeschooling if you're a homeschooling family. And until next time, bye.